Well, let's bring in Joe Douglas, the general manager of the Jets. Is nice Perfect. enough to join us. He just spoke to the uh, the uh, most of the print media on a conference call, and he's uh, joining us now on the Michael K. Show. Joe, how are you doing? First off, you and your family. Doing great. Good to be with you guys, Michael, Don, Peter. Um, family's doing well. Uh, working remotely from home. Uh, like I said to, to the beat guys, I apologize if you hear our, our dog barking, our kids screaming, but um, you know um, we're, we're we're doing really well. I hope I hope uh, you guys, your family, your loved ones are all doing well. Also, we're all hanging in there. Thank, Thank you, you, Joe. Um, we were just talking about you know Adam Schefter said today uh, last night on Scott Van Pelt's Sports Center that. He didn't think they should have the draft because of the carnage in the streets, and I, I don't quite get that. I mean, why are entertainment shows still on TV? Why is there all forms of entertainment making people laugh and taking their minds off the awful stuff that's going on on the planet? What's your take on this, Joe? Do you think that the draft should go on? Um, you know, I'm, <laughs> I think that we're ready for the draft. I think that, uh, you know, really from, from my perspective, um, you know, uh, even though it's been different working remotely, um, we really our timeline has, has really been business as usual um, with with everything that's going on in the world. Uh, I feel like, you know, um, if we can be if we can be a, a positive distraction, um, you know, so be it. We're willing to do that. Um, I don't think it's for me to say, you know, whether or not we should have a draft. Uh, but what I can say is that. Yeah, we're going to be ready. You know, we're going to be ready when uh, when, it, when it's draft day. With all the things that you cannot do, the, all the knowledge that might be lost because of what's going on with the pandemic, how much of a disadvantage do you feel you're at in knowing the player you select at 11? Look, I think that I, I, I've heard some teams or some people say that, you know, 25% of the work on these players isn't done. Um, I personally don't feel that way. I feel like our scouts have done a tremendous job um, starting back in August, really June. We, we, when, I, when I first came in here, we had our college scouts uh, do some spring scouting on the guys in this class just to get them up to speed on our new grading scale. So I think that I think that um, the information that our scouts have been able to get, I think we've been able to go through the all-star game process and really sit down um, with, a, with a number of players. Um, I think being able to go through the combine um, as usual. Um, I think the fact that there isn't, um, there isn't the pro days, there isn't the top 30 visits, maybe throwing some people off. But I think we're, we're making the most of uh, what we have to use. And I think... Um, yeah, I think our MVP right now has been our, our IT department and our video department, you know, and our medical department, guys that have been able to adjust and improvise. And, you know, we've been able to, to use technology to our advantage, and we've been able to adjust. And I think our coaching staff is doing a great job of uh, getting in front of these players and, um, you know, going over scheme, going over video. So I think we've been able to make the most of our technology, and that's why we feel good about, about the draft. All right, let's, let's talk about um... – what you've done in free agency. It seems that it's slow and steady, wins the race. There wasn't any outrageous long-term deal, a lot of one-year deals. Was that by design, Joe, to keep flexibility, or did you not see the player out there that you wanted to commit to for a real long-term big money deal? Yeah, I think, I think I've been uh, an open book in terms of what, what we were really trying to address in terms of uh, positions. And I think the one thing that we wanted to do is be uh, very financially responsible. Um, I, I, I can tell you that um, it wasn't our plan um, to do the amount of one-year deals. I think it's, uh, look, I think contracts are two-way street with, with the team, with the player and the agent. And I think, I think that's what the market dictated this year. Um, it, just, it just worked out that way with a lot of one-year deals. Um, but I know our plan was to address key positions and be responsible in doing so so that it could provide us flexibility moving forward. What uh, happened with Robbie Anderson? Look, I think Robbie, um, I can't say enough about, about the way Robbie handled himself last year and just his career path from going from an undrafted free agent to uh, being a starting uh, uh, impact, starting receiver in the National Football League. Um, you know, Rob, Robbie has a unique opportunity to go back with his college coach from Temple in that role uh, in Carolina. I wish him nothing but the best. Um, obviously, he was he was a very uh, he was a very good Jet. Um, I can tell you that we're excited 
uh, about Bashad Perryman, uh, what he brings to this organization, and his ability to take the top off the defense and uh, be an explosive playmaker for us. Now, you uh, certainly signed your share of uh, people on the offensive line, which a lot of people circled as a, as a big need to protect Sam Darnold. Uh, where mm-hmm. does that leave Brian Winters? Is Brian Winters coming back? Yeah, I mean, my, my stance on Brian hasn't changed, you know, from, from the combine when I spoke to our media. You know, he, he's really the only guy, um, the only offensive lineman on our team that's returning that's an opening day starter. Um, so, you know, we envision him giving it, be given every opportunity to, to compete for that spot. Uh, again, another guy that's, uh, you know, he's been, he's been an outstanding jet. You know, his level of toughness is uh, through the roof, and uh, he's a great teammate. Um, so, um, you know, excited, excited to you know, have Brian back for training camp. Uh, I'm curious just um, from a challenge standpoint of trying to determine what last year was all about. From 1-7, and 6-2, and two, two completely different seasons. First half, injuries were a problem. Second half, you could say, well, you want 6-2 and two because your schedule was a little easier. How challenging is it to find out exactly which of those two halves are the real Jets? Yeah. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for the 1-7 start. start. Um, I just, I can tell you that I, I, I couldn't be more proud of the way that this team finished uh, the season. And I think a lot of it had to do with our coaching staff. Um, Adam, Greg, um, Coach Boyer, you know, they, they kept everybody together. And, and the locker was, was outstanding. No one, no one backed down, you know, even, even at the darkest point, you know, one and seven. Guys are out there every day coming in early, um, getting extra work in, getting extra reps in. I think, I think that mentality has been to carry us forward um, because we, we do have the right types, type of people in the building. Um, you know, and we had, and a lot of guys, a lot of guys received opportunities in the back half of the season, and they made the most of it. Um, and, and their hunger and their drive and their competitiveness showed uh, throughout, throughout the end of the year. So um, I think I can speak for everybody in the organization. Um, you know, especially Greg and our defensive staff. You know, we're all going to be excited to have CJ back um, healthy, and um, you know, hopefully uh, for the entire season. And so um, I think I think there's a lot of positive things from the finish of last year that can springboard us into 2020. Well, you mentioned defense. So I'll put you on the spot. Uh, Jadavian Clowney has lowered his price to 17 to 18 million a year. Are the Jets going to dive in? Yeah, I'll, I'll say the same thing I said to the beat. Um, you know, we we've done our due diligence with every player um, you know, in this. In this draft, I think uh, our football administrative staff, headed up by Dave Sosa and Nick Sabella, they've done a great job so far, kind of, kind of forecasting what the market has been. Um, you know, we uh, if the right if the right opportunity presents itself, you know, we're gonna we're gonna strike. Um, you know, I'm not gonna get into specifics on Jadavian or any conversations we've had, um, but I mean, obviously, he's been a dynamic player in the National Football League. Does that mean I can't follow up and say what are the odds you get in Trent Williams? <laughs> I, I I'll give you the, I'll give you the uh, exact same answer that we have done our due diligence on on a lot of players and uh, you know again it, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna have to be the right opportunity for us in terms of um, financial um, you know trade uh, you know, what the trade's gonna look like things like that but um, it's got to be the right opportunity for us. All right, be honest. What was your reaction when Brady left for Tampa? <laughs> uh, honestly, um, look, I mean, I I always loved competing against Tom Brady, you know, no matter whether it was with the Baltimore Ravens or the Eagles or the Jets. Um, so, uh, look, I mean, he's a great player. He's probably the best player of all time. And, um, you know, wish him well in Tampa. And you know, we've got we've got so many so many things to worry about with our own team. I I couldn't even begin to comment on you know what's uh, what's going on with other teams, but you know we've got to, we've really got to worry about ourselves moving forward. Joe uh, Douglas is our guest right here on the Michael K Show, Jets GM, as he's preparing for the upcoming NFL draft. Um, with the the rule passed yesterday that there's two more wild card teams. Do you look at this? I mean, because we started this interview with, you know, slow and steady. You're not doing anything splashy just yet. 
Are the Jets looking to make the playoffs this year, or is it just a year to rebuild? So this is is this the part where I'm supposed to make a splashy comment about uh, we're definitely yes. This play. is the one on the back page of the paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, um, listen, <laughs> this, this is going to sound cliche and boring, but we we're we're trying to be better. You know, um, we're, we're trying to be a better team than we were after the Buffalo game. You know, we're trying to we're just trying to get better each day. Um, when, whenever we get back together as a team, whenever that may be. Um, you know, that's going to be our approach, you know, just, just get better than we were the day before. You know, I mean, obviously the ultimate goal every year is to win the Super Bowl. Um, and you can't, and you can't win the Super Bowl unless you get into the playoffs. So, um, you know, we're trying, what we're trying to do is build the right foundation, build the right foundation of people and, uh, really add to the, add the depth and the quality of people to this team. What are your expectations? Joe, the thing, the thing we love about you, Joe is that you never lie, and you did Ever. not lie. That was cliched and boring. You were absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never lie to you guys. That's, that's, uh, I promise you that. Uh, what can we expect from Le'Veon Bell? You know, the expectation is that we're going we're gonna to block better for Le'Veon, you know, mm-hmm. and um, I, know, I, know, I know the Le'Veon that's in the building every day, and I know how competitive he is. I know the fire that he brings. So um, I'm excited to get him back here, um, you know, and uh, and I'm sure he's excited to get back here and get going. And um, you know, I know uh, I know we've got some some new offensive linemen that can't wait to to open some holes for him. I was reading some of the uh, remarks that you made to the beat writers. Did you actually have a conversation with Sam Darnold's parents that you're going to protect him better? Did they first come up to you, or did you just offer that to them? I I met them. On the sideline prior to the Giants preseason game, yeah, and his mom gave me a big hug, and I said, "I promise, I promise you that I'm going to do everything in my power to to protect your son and uh, give him give him the playmakers that he needs." So that's that's right there. That's true. She must have been appreciative. <laughs> no, there. I, I enjoyed spending time with him before that game. Um, just two two outstanding people. So that was that was pretty cool. Spend a little time with them before the Giants preseason game. Now, year three for a quarterback is usually that year where they they take the big leap. Uh, can he still do that despite the time that he missed last year? I think so, I, and I think you saw that in the back half of the year. Um, you know, the thing the thing I love about Sam is just how tough he is, how tough he is men- mentally and psychologically. You know, he wasn't. Uh, you know, he 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 was able to bounce back uh, from the from the uh, Patriots game, the Monday night game. Um, you know, he he is just a rugged dude, and he is very accurate. You know, so um, I think I think uh, we have a special young player in Sam Darnold. So there's your splashy headline, I guess. So um, <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm I'm so excited about Sam. You know, um, and uh, you know, he 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 when you know, talk about. You know the, what we're trying to do culture-wise, and and um, the, the competitors that we're looking for, and the mentality that we're looking for. You know, we feel that that we have that in Sam, and um, you know, we just we just got to do everything we can to help him. What'd you get Adam Gase for a birthday present? Yeah, I think uh, I think I'm um, you know maybe a couple of Xbox games. You know, I think he's had some, <laughs> maybe some some time to. Uh, you know, do to play some some games with the son, but um, you know, hopefully, um, hopefully uh, these offensive linemen are a good start, um, and um, you know, hopefully we can give them give them some more presence at the draft. Do you, do you think there's any chance Gase actually relaxes for five minutes while he's stuck in the house during quarantine? No, no, I'm just kidding. Like he was, like he's he's wired and he's wired in on this draft. He's wired in on free agency. Um, he's, uh, he's getting after the tape, you know, he's studying, he's studying every position, you know, not just offensive. So he's, uh, he's getting after it in this draft prep. Yeah, Cause I would 11 think pick right... in the draft is, a, I'm sorry, Don 11 pick in the draft. Is it going to be offense or a wide receiver uh, offensive line or a wide receiver? We'll see how it plays out. It's, it, it, I think, I think the 11th pick, and you know, I'm sure we'll talk more about it as we get closer, but I think the 11th pick is a very interesting place to be. You know, I think, um, you know, especially if there's a run on, on uh, you know, uh, quarterbacks or uh, offensive line or why we'll see what happens. Um, but, 
you know, we feel like there's going to be a really good player there at pick 11. So we feel like it's a good spot to be in this year. Are you open to move up or down? Look, if the right, if the right opportunity presents itself, you know, we'll, we'll consider anything. Um, you know, depending on who the player, you know, players are available and, uh, you know, on a move up or what players are available still if we want to move back. Um, so, um, I think, I think we're, we're trying to maintain a level of flexibility in that regard. Well, good luck in the draft, but most importantly, you and your family stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we look forward to talking soon. You too, guys. I appreciate the time. You guys stay safe. You too.